So the question is, does the drip edge get installed over or under the tar paper or ice barrier on the eave? I made a video highlighting the installation of drip edge and was getting some comments saying that I was doing it wrong. This is the way we do it and ha we have always done it this way for at least the last 30 years that I can remember. And even back then, roofs that we tore off were even done this way. Here in South Florida, ice and snow are not part of our vocabulary. It is sunshine, rain, and the threat of high winds from tropical storms and hurricanes. So as the old saying goes, we do it different up north. So I did a little research. Well, apparently, Florida seems to be the only state that allows the drip edge to go over or under the underlayment at the eave. This is according to the building code. So unless your job is in Florida, probably should plan on putting the drip edge underneath the underlayment or ice and water shield at the eave. So let's take a look at these building codes. Okay, so looking at the actual code and the words in the code, uh, this was taken from the North Carolina State Building Code building, which uh, when you do your own research, you'll see that there's many different codes, and this is this is building there's also residential which kind of mirrors building so building is pretty pretty general and and can be relied on uh, to to get information okay so particularly this is North Carolina which is a couple states north of Florida uh, chapter 15 roof assemblies and rooftop structures uh, standard international building code if the state adopted this verbiage uh, it's pretty standard, uh, pretty standard verbiage. Uh, drip edge shall pre be provided at eaves and rakes of shingle roofs. Uh, adjacent segments shall be lapped two inches. Vertical legs shall be one and a half inches, and shall extend a minimum of a quarter inch below the sheathing. Uh, drip edge shall extend back on the roof two inches. Here it is. Underlayment shall be installed over drip edges along eaves. Drip edges shall be installed over underlayment along rake edges. Drip edges shall be mechanically fastened 12 inches on center. So again, that's pretty standard. Now, if it doesn't say specifically, uh, again, this was standard verbiage. Uh, this was taken out of the standard uh, international building code from another state. Again, in this is in the building uh, section, building section, not the residential section. Uh, so looking at it like this, if it doesn't say, you, you can see it says the same thing, overlap two inches, uh, extend a quarter inch below the sheathing, uh, lap uh, back on the roof a minimum of two inches, and mechanically fasten 12 inches, but it doesn't say anything about over under. This is when we would go to the manufacturer's installation instructions. So here I have GAF, uh, basically a uh, diagram along the rake, put non-corrosive metal drip edge on top of GAF roof deck protection. Along eaves, put GAF leak barrier on top of non-corrosive metal drip edge. So there you have it. Okay, now in Florida, again taken from the building uh, section 1507.2.9.3 drip edge. Uh, the overlap is three inches, which is one inch bigger. Extend a half inch, which is a quarter of an inch more below the sheathing, and extend on the roof a minimum of two inches, basically the nailer. Uh, here it is. Drip edge at eaves shall be permitted to be installed either, either, either over or under the underlayment. If installed over the underlayment, there shall be a minimum four inches width of roof cement installed over the drip edge flange. This actually came after Andrew, Hurricane Andrew back in 1992. I remember a time when we actually installed drip edge over the underlayment with no roof cement. 
Uh, drip edge shall be mechanically fastened a maximum of 12 inches on center, where the VASD, as determined in accordance with section 1609, is 110 or greater, or the mean roof height exceeds 33 feet, drip edges shall be mechanically fastened a maximum of 4 inches on center. And where I'm at, typically, this is, this is what uh, we do. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is an ice barrier. If you're in an area that requires a self-adhered uh, membrane on the bottom or on the eave over the drip edge, this is where it would say, and this is typical of what it would say, in areas where there has been a history of ice forming along the eaves causing a backup of water, an ice barrier that consists of at least two layers of underlayment cemented together or of a self-adhering polymer modified bitumen sheet shall be used in lieu of normal underlayment and extend from the lowest edges of all roof surfaces, the, basically the eave, to a point at least 24 inches inside the exterior wall line of the building. Uh, there's various diagrams uh, around that, that state this. Now another thing that it might say uh, in this uh, particular uh, verbiage was taken out of the Washington DC uh, code, uh, the slate shingles 1507.7.4 ice bear in areas where the average daily temperature in January is 25 degrees Fahrenheit or less, or where there is possibility of ice forming along the eaves causing a backup of water, it consists of two layers of underlayment, uh, basically the same thing. Uh, that's going to be important. Okay, so now uh, let me explain where I got this information. Uh, the Florida Building Code, I know I can go to uh, the state website and go to the Florida Building Code online. However, uh, in this case, I went to www.iccsafe.org. I clicked on Online Building Codes. I typed in the state and in the Search Codes and Standards Titles search bar. And then I can click on Free View uh, for... Uh, whatever uh, actual code book I wanna I wanna look at, but you can also purchase purchase them for uh, then you can have print privileges and all all kinds of stuff. Uh, another place I found resourceful was up dot codes, and uh, if you go there and you can just click on find your codes, and then in the left side you'll see that the available states are highlighted. The states that are not highlighted you can still find the codes you just have to do a little searching and that's when I started researching all the other states that's when I really found this one and it seemed to have a, an answer for every state okay uh, another thing you can do is uh, search uh, your city or your state building code in Google or your favorite search engine uh, again not super reliable but you can find the information. Another way is to go to your building department or community development in your local area and inquire there. They should be able to tell you, uh, but that's not always the case. Um, and if you're still in doubt, I'm sure a local roofing or building contractor can steer you in the right direction.